So I wanted to come on here and make a video today specifically, and by the way, just to get it out of the way, I'm shooting with my Sony a6400, and I'm actually using my Samyang 12 millimeter f2 lens, the manual version, just because I love it so much. So anyway, um, so I'm manually focusing myself right now. Um, I wanted to do a video specifically today, and I'm speaking quietly because I have neighbors upstairs. Um, I wanted to document this day because um, some of you know that uh, last week I slipped on some ice, fell on my head, actually fell on my face, and I wound up in the ER um, just to make sure that, you know, nothing happened internally in my brain or anything because, you know, I think people often think about Natasha Richardson and other people who have had head injuries and then, you know, something bad happens internally, they, they're, they have bleeding in their brain and you could have a problem. So anyway, turned out I was fine. Um, I just had a bunch of cuts. Um, it was looked like kind of like a crime scene. There was blood everywhere. <clears throat> and everything's healing nicely, as you could probably see. But um, today I had a weird sensation in my traps, my trapezius muscles, and my neck kind of like seized up into my neck, bad spasm. And then my arms suddenly got weak. And so I thought, oh shit, maybe this is what a bleeding brain feels like. So I took myself to an emergency room and I spent another couple of hours and it turned out I'm, I'm good, you know. But, you know, if I wasn't so paranoid about falling last week and if people hadn't been sending me messages like, yo, make sure you get yourself checked out because, you know, bad things could happen, I probably wouldn't have gone. But I did go and I'm very grateful to have seen these doctors and you know, now I've had two emergency room doctors tell me I'm fine, so now I'm convinced I should be good. So, anyway, I've been wanting to do this video, and I figured tonight's as good a night as any to do it because I wanted to document that, you know, what I went through today, and so now it's documented. So, what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about, is the LG V40 still relevant in 2022 for filmmaking? Now, this also could apply to... The, all the all the V-series phones that I've used have been the V10, the V20, the V30, the V40, and then there's the V50 and the V60 as well, which I have not owned either of those. But all of these phones are great content creator devices, tools for making film or video. Um, first of all, what they're best known for actually since the very first um, incantation of the phone, the V10, was that they had pro audio recording and playback capabilities. Um, like they could power professional headphones and they sounded off the charts incredible. <laughs> all of a sudden I'm getting all these uh, notifications, so don't pay attention to those sounds. But also, you could record 24-bit, I think it was 24-bit, 48 kilohertz audio with the V10, but then it went up to 2496 when you got to the uh, V40. And the V60, same thing, like pro audio, low cut filter, um, limiter, like you had a lot of control over the input of the audio. The um, preamps are really, really high quality preamps. And so you have a pro audio device, which I used for a lot of my work for a while until I got a Zoom HN1, which, you know, is much lighter and easier to use and has a, you know, well, I use the SD card in my uh, LG phones as well. So really they're kind of on par with each other, but I got the HN1 just because I wanted to have it and uh, supposedly it had better preamps, but honestly it sounds the same to me. So the V40, why is it relevant for filmmaking? Well, first of all, I know because I shot a feature length film on the LG V40. That was the only thing I used. Um, I used actually the LG V20 to shoot my, I mean to shoot, to record my audio and I synced everything in post in DaVinci Resolve. So I used the V20 as a pro audio device with a Purple Panda lavalier mic and the sound was incredible. Like it sounded really good. And um, I used the V40 for, for my filmmaking. Now, why, did I, why do I think so highly of the V series phones? because of the manual controls. Now, I don't know if you know about a, a software called Filmic Pro, but you know, most people who shoot films with iPhones use Filmic Pro because it gives you access to all the manual controls. You know, most iPhones don't have manual controls 
and actually most Android phones don't either. But the thing about the V series phones is that you can control your ISO, you can control your white balance, you could shoot 24 frames per second, you could shoot, you know, you could choose uh, 60 frames per second, um, you could shoot 120 at 1080, you know, you could, they all shoot 4K, you could save log files. You can save raw files if you're just shooting photography. I mean, the LG V40 was HDR device. So, I mean, it was ridiculous. You know, it was just, it, it allowed me to do so much. And I have to say that I think the lens is, is like a 27 millimeter lens. So, you know, obviously you could pinch it open and pinch it closed to, to zoom in and out, but I didn't really do that in my film. I just used it as 27 millimeters and I zoomed with my feet, as they say, to get the shots that I wanted. But, you know, to, to work in this way was a great learning experience for me to then, you know, pick up a, this Sony a6400, which I use now. And I already knew how to, you know, I relied mostly on manual focus, even though the LG V40 has great autofocus as well. But I just didn't use it, you know. But I learned so much about, you know, light and depth of field and to get the white balance, you know, my color proper, you know, properly set. Um, I just learned so much, you know, it has um, all of the V-Series phones have micro SD cards, so, you know, interchangeable, so you have plenty of memory, you know. The battery life is okay, you know, the V10 had a removable battery, so you could stock up on them and use the V10, but uh, actually the V20 also had a removable battery, but from the V30, the V40 on, it was all an internal battery, and the battery life was fine, you know. I was shooting, I shot my film in 1080, 24 frames per second, and uh, I really never ran out of batteries during the day, and I, I did some long monologues, but mostly it was shooting, you know, chunk after chunk after chunk, like making a proper film. Um, and I guess the only thing that I needed, you know, the only things that I needed to get with these phones, um, I bought an ND filter. Now, there are links in my description for everything that I use, so just go down below and you'll see everything. But I got an ND filter so I could stay at 24 frames per second and keep my um, you know, triangle together and have everything set at 1 over 50. And so I got an ND filter. I had a CPL filter, which I never used. I just clipped the filter right onto the phone. Like I said, I got the lavalier mic, which cost me like, I think it cost me 69 bucks when I got it. Um, I got an RGB light, which is about the size of a credit card and had all kinds of capabilities on it. it cost me 60 bucks, I think. Um, I got a stick light, which I actually never used. I got a tiny little light, you know, also that I used when I was shooting in my car, when I needed to put a little bit of light on my face. But honestly, I didn't really know much about what I was doing at the beginning because I was studying with all these YouTubers. And so, yeah, the LG V40, I think it did a great job because not to toot my own horn, but we just won the Milan Gold Award for Best Indie Feature, which blew my mind. Like, I shot this thing on my phone, you know? And honestly, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the music on this movie is astounding. You know, Steve Peckman did the score. I have great singer-songwriters who contributed um, songs to the, to the uh, film as well. It's called The Center of Distance, by the way. But that's not what this video is about. So, I'm just gonna end this here and say, if you don't have the money to make it to buy a camera right now and you have um, say, okay, well, let's just say this. I spent $282 total to make my film because you can buy an LG V40 on eBay right now, brand new. Now it won't say brand new, but it's brand new for less than $200. You can get a V30. I mean, these use H.265 and H.264 codecs. So these are high quality files. You can get a V30 for under 150 bucks used or, you know, they all say reconditioned or whatever. But I bought the V40 and the V30 both on eBay and they came absolutely brand new. And I think I'm going to buy a V60 because as much as I've moved on to using a proper camera now and I got all these lenses and I have all this other equipment, I'm still going to use a, a phone for a situation or I could see myself still using a phone for certain situations like maybe I want to you know, be able to put the camera in a space that a that the, a, a proper camera can't fit into so I could just stick the um, the phone into like maybe a rock wall or something like that or underneath a car or you know there are smaller spaces where it can fit so I might be able to get some great shots and it's also a great idea to use as a B camera you know a second camera I mean I can shoot 24 frames per second I can match everything pretty much 
color science is not bad and I got to tell you that the the cameras on these v-series phones are incredible they're incredible they're great cameras you know I mean they're not as like um, as pop, they don't have as much pop as say an iPhone or the Galaxy phones you know there's not as much contrast they're not as saturated they're more just like real you know it looks like real life and that's what I prefer you know I think the only limitation of the phones is that they don't seem to be quite as good in low light but then again I had no idea what I was doing I didn't even know what ISO meant when I started shooting my film so maybe it was my shooting it not correctly not getting the right lighting you know I'm quite sure I had a lot to do with that but I also do think that you know the cameras have much better low light capability and obviously I can get faster lenses um, although I think the V40 uh, f-stop was a 1.2 or something like that I mean is that possible like I don't know you know don't quote me on everything but um, I do have experience with it I shot a whole film on it I still use them today and so I say if you want to get a phone for a couple of hundred bucks and you can get ND filter lights lavalier mic you can get you know use an external mic if you want to but I would I would recommend getting a lavalier mic and then syncing the audio in post you will first of all learn so much and you also have the ability to do great work like high-level professional work so is the LG V40 specifically still relevant right now absolutely as is the V50 the V60 I just wouldn't recommend using them as phones anymore I mean I do have a SIM card in my LG V30, but you know, like they no longer give updates so you don't get security updates and things like that. So I wouldn't put any kind of like personal information or anything in those phones, but to use as a Wi-Fi device, P OLED screens, I mean, the screens are great. You know, they look fantastic. They're six inch screens or 5.7, I think on the V30, but the V40, I believe is 6.1 and the V60 is even bigger than that. So I highly recommend them as like small tablets. You can also use them as monitors for your camera. So you could do that too, but I'm talking more about if you can't get a camera, can you rely upon using a device like this as your camera? And you know, use it separately. Like you don't have to use your phone. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to like worry about people calling or texting or put yourself in, you know, airplane mode and miss messages. You could just have a separate device for your filmmaking needs highly recommended that's all i wanted to say today um, i would recommend from the v30 up i think the lg v30 was when they made a huge leap in the quality of the cameras and um, actually there's a, a comparison of the lg v30 versus a red camera i'm gonna post the link in the description as well and um, get a good idea of the capabilities of that phone and the v40 just took it up a notch so are they relevant? Absolutely. Um, thanks for watching. I'm going to stop now. Um, and uh, thanks for all the uh, support and the beautiful messages when people found out that I fell. I'm good. I'm healthy. And I will see you next time. Peace. Oh, and please subscribe if you find value in any of my work. And please hit the like button. And that's it.